This isn't just some mold that you can heat up and will go away or wash it away with, with some Windex. This is actually a pretty serious issue. That's a BC professor talking about radon gas. It occurs naturally when uranium breaks down in the ground. You can't smell it or taste it or see it. But when it seeps into confined spaces like your home, it can build up and become a health risk, increasing your risk of developing lung cancer. Joanna Romeliotis has more on the invisible threat to thousands of Canadians. It was only after his wife died that Dana Schmidt dusted off his pilot's license and took to the skies again. Flying is an escape, but it's also a grim reminder. Every time he soars above British Columbia's Kootenai Valley, he looks down at an invisible threat, one he suspects may have killed his wife. It was a shock. It was sort of like you're working, you have your whole life planned in front of you and then it disappears. This stunning corner of the earth is home to a silent killer, deadly levels of a radioactive gas called radon. Dana had no idea until it was too late. The whole thing is about saving lives. Radon doesn't cause anything other than lung cancer. I was taken, I think the last one she chaired. Donna Schmidt was healthy and active, but in the space of three months, lung cancer ravaged her. She was a former smoker, but Dana had a feeling something else was to blame. She'd quit for over 20 years, and she'd lost 85% of her probability of getting lung cancer from cigarettes. I was looking through the literature, and the word, you know, lung cancer and radon popped up. Castlegar, he discovered, has a high level of uranium in its soil, emitting high levels of radon. The second leading cause of lung cancer in the country. Everyone exposed to it may be at risk. After his wife died, Dana bought a $30 kit and tested his home. Sure enough, the levels of radon were high. When you uh, open the package... So he bought thousands of more kits and started giving them away for free. It became kind of a mission for me to inform everybody that uh, look at the data, don't take my word for it, actually go in and read what's available and you'll find that what's in your home can kill you. Nearly half the homes tested in Castlegar have dangerously high levels of radon seeping into them and that's true of thousands of homes across the country. But most Canadians know little about a radioactive gas that kills thousands of people every year. In a recent survey of about 14,000 homes, Health Canada found 1,557 homes had dangerous radon levels at or above 200 becquerels per cubic meter, the guidelines set by the department. The WHO set its guideline to 100 becquerels, and the CBC has learned if Canada did the same, more than 2,500 other homes in the study would report dangerously high levels of radon as well. The risk from long-term radon exposure is equivalent to all accidental deaths. Kelly Bush is with Health Canada's Radiation Protection Bureau. She says getting Canadians to care about any level of radon is the priority right now. There's a lot of um, apathy towards the issue of radon. It's really hard to get people to pay attention because you can't smell, see it, smell it or taste it. It's no one's fault. It affects everyone and it, it doesn't have an impact immediately. I'm Dr. Roberta Bonder. Health Canada launched its first radon awareness campaign last fall. Most homes have some radon in them. It recommends all Canadians test their homes, but leaves it up to them to do so and to disclose what they find. This isn't just some mold that you can heat up and will go away or wash it away with, with some Windex. This is actually a pretty serious issue. Anne-Marie Nickel is a health sciences professor at Simon Fraser University. She says Canada should adopt tough rules on radon across the country and help people get rid of it. Well, in my perfect world, we'd be offering assistance um, for people to help remediate their homes, some sort of financial assistance. It'd be a lot more focused on making sure that new buildings are built to code, especially in areas where radon levels are high. I'd be going after tenants and landlord issues, looking at um, people who run buildings where other people live. Okay, I'll show you the mitigation system we have uh, installed in the uh, space down here in the basement. 
Dana spent about $3,000 installing a ventilation system to get the radon out of his home. So it's basically sucking it up and venting it out to those pipes. So it's a way safer now? Way safer, yeah. At least I think I got rid of about 85% of the radon in my home. It has two connections. An One easy fix. He struggles with not doing it sooner. I should have known better, and I should take my share of guilt about it. But uh, at least through this effort, uh, I hope other people will uh, not have to experience this. He says he'll keep warning of the dangers of radon to save lives and to spare anyone else from living with the what-ifs. Joanna Romeliotis, CBC News, Castle Garden.